Hey guys, what's up? We're gonna check the gameplay between Fischer and Reshevsky in uh, in the US Championship 1958-59 which is actually I wanna talk a little bit about this match you know um, Fischer had won his first uh, US Championship uh, the year before and he was just a 14 year old kid and uh, here he was playing his second championship so he was now 15 years old and he was facing a, on this round on the sixth round he was facing uh, Samuel Rzewski so Samuel Rzewski for those of you who don't know him he was also a child prodigy a top US player and actually there was a huge rivalry between the two of them so I think it's no coincidence that, that this game you know um, decided the, the outcome of the championship and actually it was Fischer who won very easily. Um, one of the points was that Ryshevsky, although he was a huge talent, he was, you know, he was not uh, studying a lot of theory. He was, you know, mainly relying on his talent to win games. And we can see how professional Fischer was when, when he was just 15 years old. He was already outplaying him in very early in the opening. So I, I want to share also the the standings of this tournament w with you. Uh, as I said, the tournament was played in New York, United States, and Fisher got uh, eight and a half out of eleven, and Ryshevsky seven and a half out of eleven. So it was one, one point lead, but you know th uh, their game was decided in favor of Fisher. So we're gonna check this game and see the game that made him win the match. So Fischer played uh, as white e4, it was his main weapon, e4, c5, Ryshevsky played the Sicilian, and here he played the move g6, which is the accelerated dragon. Uh, here Bishop played the move bishop to e3, which is somewhat weird, but after knight to f6 and knight to c3 we got the position, the same position that we, we would get if we, if he had played knight to c3 straight away. Here the move c4 uh, instead of bishop b3 is the other kind of real main alternative where white wants to to get uh, a center. This is called the, the Maroxi center, the Maroxi bind. So um, the, he, this is the, the alternative but uh, Fischer played uh, the move bishop to e3 and knight to c3 which is kind of uh, leads to more open play more tactical play which uh, for a 15 year old kid I think it suits normally suits his style much better so bishop g7 and here um, Fischer played the move bishop to c4 so the um, nowadays I mean there's a lot of theory um, even in the Accelerated Dragon, which is not the most popular reply uh, to the Sicilian. But uh, one point that I want to highlight, Bishop c4 wants to is eyeballing f7, but also it's uh, you know struggling against, against d5. So d5 is a typical move that uh, Black would like to get to equalize the position. For instance, after Bishop to e2, castles castles then d5 black is already getting a, a decent position so that's why bishop to c4 uh, is a strong move and here uh, black castled so as i said here there are a lot of alternatives one uh, one if queen a5 very popular nowadays uh, knight to g4 it's a tactical idea uh, one of the points is that after taking on on g4, black takes on on d4. It leads to dynamic positions. Castles is, I would say, the more the most logical move, just to to you know put your king into safety. And here, uh, Fischer played the very accurate move, bishop to b b3. So there's a lot of subtleties here. And um, the point is that the natural move castles, then here uh, black gets 
this knight takes e4 move and he's uh, also equalizing there uh, one of the points is that um, knight takes e4 then d5 gets the piece back and if uh, bishop takes this might be tempting to so instead of knight takes e4 bishop takes f7 but then uh, This is kind of a complicated position, but uh, in the long run, uh, Black is, you know, hoping to get this bishop pair to play. But although here White has also has good knights, so it's also a complicated position. That's why bishop b3 now removes this possibility of knight xc4. And here, um, this is quite an instructive game, I think, even though uh, Fischer got a win position very quickly. So here the move, uh, the natural move would be something like d6, just to develop the bishop. There are also uh, other other possibilities, a lot of possibilities here. And Rzhevsky played a move which is might be very tempting, which is knight to a5. He wants to, you know, get this bishop, which is normally the the strongest bishop White has in this uh, in these uh, dragons. But on the other hand, you know, uh, it's wait, wasting tempi, and also white gets a very st uh, a very strong move uh, right away, which is e5. So this uh, knight on 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 c6 was controlling the square. So now uh, now uh, white get, gets e5. So positionally, it would make sense, but dynamically, it's kind of a very weak move. So uh, remember, in general, to develop the pieces in the opening, especially if you're black, you know, you can don't fall uh, behind in development because you can be punished you know very quickly as we see that it happened in the game so after the move e5 here Ryshevsky played the move knight to a8 which is actually the losing straight away uh, here the relatively best was the move uh, knight takes b3 but and here uh, white has the intermediate move taking on f6 and after taking the rook then take on g7 and if black takes here white would end up taking the the knight so on here we get this uh, material imbalance of uh, two minor pieces against the rook and a pawn i actually recorded a, a lesson about this topic and um, as we as we saw in the opening, you know the minor pieces are much stronger, so white has uh, an advantage here. There's also another another point that I want, want another line that we want to show here that after taking on c2, taking king takes here, white has this nice move to take on a7 to get uh, again this similar material imbalance. The point is that black cannot take the bishop because queen d4 attacks the the king and the rook. But this, in any case, this was relatively best. White gets an advantage, probably still not decisive. But after knight, knight, uh, knight to e8, okay. So I'm, I'm going to show you the, the winning move, which is, bishop takes f7. And here, um, here black took with the, with the king. In any case, if black takes with the, the rook, or if black plays king h8, the uh, white's reply is the same. So I would like to ask you to, to pause the video and to find the, the winning move for white. So the tactical idea is knight to e6, which is a very strong move. And um, if black takes the the knight he with the king, he gets made it. This is just a forcing line. Remember all these forcing moves, g4 should come naturally because it's a forcing move g1, king h4 queen e4 and it's going to lead to checkmate after queen g4 takes queen g3 or queen g2 leads to, to mate so here the alternative is to to take the pawn because the to take the knight with the pawn because the queen doesn't have squares and after taking the with the pawn Queen d8. Okay, so here, knight c6. Actually, it's 12 moves, and 
Uh, black is dead lost. He has only two minor pieces for the queen. So the game continued actually the game continued until move uh, 42 so a lot 30 more moves and um, I'm not going to show the rest of the game because the position is clearly winning and actually as far as I know they, they had uh, Ryshevsky and Fischer had a huge rivalry and uh, probably Ryshevsky was very upset it was kind of the middle of the tournament round six and maybe he continued because he was too upset maybe he continued to to tire fish a little bit or uh, I don't know if there's any other reason that you might know you might like to share it in the comment section so uh, that's it for today I hope that you like the game and I talk to you next time bye bye